Thank you. And good afternoon, ma'am. If you could, please state your full name for the record and spell your last name. Molly Darnell, D-A-R-N-E-L-L. -L. Thank you. We are a video recorded courtroom, so if you could, please keep your voice up for me so we can make sure that you're captured by our video recording. And please speak like you're speaking to someone at the very back of the courtroom, okay? I got it. Thank you. Thank Pick you. Your witness. Good afternoon. Uh, may I call you Molly? You can. All right. Molly, can you tell the court what you do for a living? Um, I'm an educator for Oxford Schools. And how long have you been an educator for Oxford Schools? I started with Oxford in the fall of 98. So like since you've become a teacher? Since I became a teacher. Okay. You've spent your whole career at Oxford Schools? Correct. And what is your current title at Oxford Schools? I am a middle school mentor for Oxford Virtual Academy. Okay. So you are not in the physical classroom you're teaching virtual school? Correct. Okay. Uh, is that the position you held on November 30th, 2021? That is not the position I held on what, November 30th. Can you tell the court what position you were in on that day? Yeah, so on November 30th, I was the International Baccalaureate Coordinator, ELA coach. So you weren't, te you weren't teaching a, a, a No, a I, I was, Per, per the contract, I was a teacher, but I worked with teachers on curriculum and instruction. Okay. And for the bulk of your career, were you a classroom teacher? Yes. And can you tell the court why you became a teacher? Um, I find joy in helping kids find their passion. Or, you know, that's why. Safe to say you love kids. I do. Okay. You always taught high school? Um, I started off with middle school, and then I moved to high school, um, and I was high school most of my career, and I'm back to middle school again. Okay. Uh, Molly, I'm going to ask you to direct your attention to the, to the screen, to the right. Um, that is a map, mm -hmm. map of Oxford High School, correct? Correct. And you didn't have a, you had a classroom, but it was really an office, correct? Yeah, it was an office space that I shared with two under, other individuals who we did our um, jobs together. We were like a team. And was that for the intended to be for the whole 2021-22 school year? Correct. Okay. And can you, what was your room number? I was in, um, so you see where 222 is? I was just to the left. So, so just was, where the yep, pointer is? Yep, where, it was 224. Okay. And what is a typical day in November of 2021 for you? So on that particular morning, we were planning some professional development for teachers. I had had a meeting with admin and I was working um, with the media specialist on getting a few things in order for our um, PD the next day. Okay, so safe to say you weren't operating on a regular class schedule with Correct. passing time and, and Correct. you didn't necessarily have to recognize the time a class starts or ends? Correct. Okay. And so were you typically in the hallway during passing time? Um, I might go outside to just, you know, check things out or have a chat with the teacher if I needed to. Um, but I never used the restroom because that was when, that was teacher's times during that eight minutes to okay. ensure that they were using the restroom. All right. Around 1.50 that afternoon, do you, do you know or can you remember what, what hour or what, what was going on in the school for kids that day? I'm sorry, 12.50. 12.50. Um, that would have been, I believe, during our lunch, during the lunches. Um, and we're talking about specifically on November 30th? Yes. Okay. So specifically on November 30th, um, yeah, it would, have been in between the, it would have been in between the lunches. So it was passing time? Correct. Okay. And do you remember what you were doing? Were you in the hall for passing time or were you in your classroom? No, I had, um, I had had a, a student who I had had in the fall of uh, 2020 come in and have a little chat with me. She had left and I um, moved to my computer to check an email. Okay. Um, I want to stop you because yep. you're going to talk about the layout of your, your office, okay. correct? Yes. And I'm going to show you a picture of that layout. Is that, is that your classroom? That is my classroom. Okay. Or my office. Yes. The I'm office. Sorry, your yes. office that was housed in a classroom. Yes. Uh, when you, when you said you were checking your email, where in, in this picture would you be doing that? Uh, my desk was straight ahead. Right, yep. Right there with the go over one. Sorry. The other way. The other way. Right. Yep. Right 
that, that you can see my um, little laptop sitting right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when you went to check your email, was your door open or closed? It was open. Okay. And at some point, did you notice anything unusual? Yeah, suddenly I noticed a rush of students running um, past my door, um, almost like they were, like arms extended, there seemed to be um, like a hype about it or a, um, a, a tone about it that left me concerned. Had, had you ever seen that before? Um, not like that, um, that quick movement, no. Um, what I, not like that, no. Okay. What did you suspect might be happening? My assumption was uh, there might have been a fight or like somewhere they all wanted, there was something going on and, um, and so I uh, got up from my, excuse me, I grabbed the phone to call the office. It was immediately uh, went to um, voicemail um, and I ran out my door. So you ran to the, to the door? Yeah, I ran outside of the door okay, at so that point in time. Now you're in the hallway. Correct. And what do you see? Um, so I'm probably the you can well the the hallway is a little bit of a um, yeah like a U shape almost right. So see how it comes out. So I run out. I'm about uh, midway through two two two, and I can see yeah probably about right there, and I can see students exiting out of door four. Um, All the way down the hall. Correct. Okay. Were there still a lot of kids in the hallway? There was no one else in the hallway that I saw at the time. Did you find that strange? Uh, yeah. I couldn't really wrap my head around what was happening. Okay. At some point, did you become alarmed? I head back into my classroom immediately, or back into the office immediately, um, and I'm like, okay, could it be a prank? Is there something happening in the parking lot? Um, and that's when um, an announcement came on um, that we were headed into lockdown, that it was not a drill, and um, there was doors slamming and um, the sound of pops. So the, the announcement, who, who was on the, the loudspeaker? Steve Wolf. And who's that? The principal at the time he was the principal of Oxford High School. And did do you know did you know him well at the time? I did. And did you notice anything about his voice? Um, there was an urgency to his voice, but there was um, also uh, an intention to remain calm. Okay. And after you heard it was a lockdown, what did you hear, if anything, next? Um, so the the announcement. And the pops and the doors slamming were really close together. I get them a little bit confused in my head as to what happened first, second, or third. Okay, let's stop for a moment. When you say there was, there were pops. Mm -hmm. um, what did those sound like? What was that? Was it? Did it resemble any other sound? It could have been a locker door slamming. Okay. Like several locker doors slamming in a row. And what did you think? Um, we weren't using lockers at the time. Um, because of the announcement, I knew I had to go into lockdown. Okay. And, and when you say go into lockdown, what does that mean that you're supposed to do? So my classroom or the office door was closed at that moment. So I ran over to grab the door and shut it. I knew I'd have to shut it. And then I would have to put in the night lock, which was a security barrier that's intended to allow to kind of like whether or not the door is locked, it also helps, um, Keep anyone else from getting in. Okay. So it's a second lock of a measure. So where is the where is the night lock? And it's kept in classrooms just for lockdowns, correct? Correct. Okay. Where's the night lock located? So it was right over. Yep, right over where, kind of like by that. Yep, right in that area. And how is it? Where is it kept? It's kept in a little plastic um, box on the side of the wall. And is it is it locked, or can anyone um, anyone can open it? And is this in every classroom in Oxford High School? To my knowledge, yes. Do all the kids know what a night lock is? Are they taught what a night lock is? Um, I know that we have done multiple drills before. Um, I, 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 I assume that kids know how to use it. I was not in the classroom when those were installed. Okay. Who taught you how to use it? 
Uh, we had a staff professional development when we, um, like on a Wednesday morning, and we all learned how to do it. Okay. How close in time did you learn how to use the night lock to November 30th, 2021? Was it over a year? Was it six It was months? before COVID. Okay. So your door is now shut, mm -hmm. but you need to install the night lock, which prevents anybody from getting into the door without the master key, correct? Yeah, I think there's some, some way to get some in. Some device. Yes. Other than that, you'd have to take the casing pretty much off the door, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, so tell me what you did. Um, so I reached for the night lock. Um, and the position that I held, I also had an, um, an office space at the middle school. Those doors open differently, and so you have to put the night lock in. There's two separate ways to put the night lock in. So I looked down at the night lock for a second to, to see what type it was. Could you hear anything during this time, or was it, was it quiet? It was quiet. Okay. Um, that was when I noticed in my peripheral vision um, some movement from up above, right? I'm looking down from up because above. Because if you look at that picture, you're saying through that window. Yes, through okay. that glass side right there. Is there one side that has glass or two? Just one side. Okay. So um, I noticed some movement, um, and I look. Um, Tell the court what you saw. I locked eyes with um, someone dressed in baggy, oversized clothes. They were wearing um, a mask. And uh, was, was, was clothing dark or light? Dark clothing. Okay. Yep, dark clothing. Um, Did you tell if it was male or female? At the time, I, I thought it was a male. Okay. Um, and what did you... So, uh, yep, so I have locked eyes, and then I notice some movement down below, and I, uh, I look to see a gun raising up towards me. Okay. Were you looking at this person's eyes directly? Uh, prior to looking at the gun, yes, okay. I was looking directly at that and person's eyes. Is there anything or any words you could use to describe that? Or anything you remember about? Um, I remembered thinking in my head, no orange tip. Okay. Um, I had heard previously that BB guns have an orange tip on them. Um, so my thought was no orange tip. Um, and that's when I jumped to the, uh, to the side, to my, to my right. So you're facing the door. And I, I jumped to the right. Had you ever rec did you recognize this person at all? I had never seen this person before. Okay. And what? Why did you move to the right? I believed he was going to shoot me. And did he shoot? He did. Okay. What? What did he do? You moved to the right, and then <coughs> did you hear a shot? Um, I heard three very loud. They were physically loud, like I could feel them coming through that door. I like the power of it. Um, but they were, it sounded almost like a pop, like a cap gun. Okay. When you moved to the right, did you just move aside or did you get down? Um, I kind of jumped to the right and I felt my left shoulder uh, move back, um, and it felt like someone had burned me with hot water. Okay. Did you stop to, to um, see what that was, or? I looked at my shoulder. At that point, I noticed my um, cardigan that I was wearing was ripped. Um, I looked behind, and I noticed a bullet hole in the glass of the office, like leading out um, one of the windows. Okay. So if we can go back. Yep. You were now, you moved to the, to your right, so, mm -hmm. so you're I'm over here. Yep. Okay. And you're facing the classroom, correct? You're yeah, I'm still the... facing the wall, okay. right? So if there was no wall there, I would be looking at the hallway. Okay. And at some point you turn around and you see what? I, I mean, I just turn around and I see, you can see that bullet hole in the window up there. I noticed that, and I remembered thinking in my head, um, 
A BB gun couldn't do that. So, I'll, okay. What's through that window? That's the courtyard. Okay. What did you do next, Molly? Were you standing or were you sitting? Um, I was standing. I have to ask you something. Was the night lock in your door at this point? No. Where was it? It was in my hand. Okay. Um, at that point in time, I knew I needed to barricade my door. Um, I was afraid to go back towards the door. So I grabbed one of those long filing cabinets mm -hmm. and tried to pull it back um, and realized it was too heavy for me. Where was the filing cabinet? So right next to that door, there was a mini fridge. Mm -hmm. Then there was a filing cabinet and then there was a cart. Okay. Now, there is something barricading the door partially. Mm -hmm. So what, what is that and how did it get there? Yeah, so what happened was um, after I realized I couldn't move that filing cabinet back, um, I got down on my hands and knees and I crawled back and I dropped the night lock in. Um, and then I grabbed the rolling cabinet and I shoved it against the door in the wall. Okay. So you, you crawled over and then finally put the, the, put night, the night lock in. in. Okay. And what did you do after you put the that in front of the door and you put the night lock in? Um, at that point in time, I um, continued to move that, that um, filing cabinet out a little bit more so I could crawl behind it. My concern was that he would come back through that window and, and be able to see me. The courtyard? Correct. Okay. Now, were you using both of your arms to move these things? I was. Okay. Were you feeling any pain? I was not. Okay. Once you got behind the filing cabinet, mm -hmm. which is not visible in this picture, correct? Correct. Okay. Were you crouching, sitting, standing? I, cr I was crouching down. Um, at that point, I had um, sent my husband a text message um, that just said, I love you, active shooter. Okay. Did uh -huh. he respond? He did. What um, did he say, if you remember? He said, just get safe. What did you say? I didn't respond okay. to that. Um, that was about the time that I realized uh, that I was bleeding. I could feel blood on my arm. Um, and I knew we have a blood bag you can see on the wall. It's, um, it's in red. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, I knew I couldn't get back to the door. Um, the wound is kind of back here on the back of my arm, so it was very difficult for me to see. So you, you saw blood, mm -hmm. and is that when you realized you had been shot? Um, I suppose, yes, I think I was still in disbelief that I had been shot. Um, but what I knew was I was bleeding. Okay, so what did you do? Um, I removed my carnigan, and I used it to tie a tourniquet above um, the wound. And, and who taught you how to do that? Uh, we've had training videos on how to pack a wound and treat a wound. Could you see the wound at this point? No, it was, I mean, I still had on um, another shirt underneath my carnigan. It was just blood stained. Okay. After you made the tourniquet, Molly, what did you do next? Um, so I, that was when I started receiving text messages. And do you remember who you received a text message from? Um, so the first one was um, the ELA department, um, who I work with, said, um, I'm hearing active shooter. And I responded, I saw one. Um, and left it at that. Um, and then moments later, I received a text message from my daughter. Um, how old was your daughter at the time? Um, 16. And where was she in high school somewhere else? She was at a high school in a neighboring district. And what did her text say, Mom? Um, she asked if I was okay, that they were hearing things. Um, and what did you respond? I said, I'm safe. I've sheltered in place, and I love you. You did not tell her you'd been shot? I did not. And why not? Um, I was trying to protect her. Okay. 
Did you text anyone and tell them that you had been shot? I did not. Okay. Well, not yet. Okay. What did you do after after you sent that text to your daughter? Um, I had a moment where I thought, uh, do I need to contact my other daughter who lives out of state? Or and um, and you, you didn't do that, but tell tell the court why. I didn't do that because I thought she'll never, she won't hear about this yet. She doesn't have to know about this yet. I thought um, by not saying anything, I could keep her safe a little bit longer. And I know this is important to you, so that's why I'm going to ask. You you regret that? I do. Okay. Tell the court why. Um, because she found out anyway. Um, she made the decision to contact my husband because she knew if um, if she contacted me and he could hear the phone, then he would know where I was. The shooter. Correct. Okay. What did you do? Um, at that point, I ca called my husband. So you actually made a call. I did. And at this point, did you know where the shooter was? Were you hearing anything? Did you have any idea what was going on? Um, no, uh, it was complete silence. Like I could not, I could not hear anything. I was, um, it was complete silence. And what did you say to your husband? Um, I called my husband. Um, I told him I had been shot. He asked me if I had a tourniquet on, and I said yes. Um, and then I kept wanting to tell him what I was, what was happening, mm -hmm. like what I was hearing and what I was thinking. Um, and he kept begging me to stop talking. Why? He, he was just said, please, uh, like, shh, 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 I don't want him to hear you. Okay. So did you eventually hang up? He, we did. We, he. He, we felt like it was uh, the best thing to do. I, I, I would just want him to talk. Okay. So now you're not on the phone. I'm not on the you're phone. You're crouched behind the cabinet. Your arm is bleeding. Mm -hmm. And another announcement comes on. <coughs> uh, this time it was Pam Fine, and she said we are still in lockdown. Um, at that point, I received a text message from our media specialist that said, I didn't hear that clearly, um, and I said, "Just we're still in lockdown. Stay, stay in lockdown." Um, I am starting to uncontrollably shake at that point in time, um, and I hear a diff I hear something different in the hallway. I'm hearing footsteps. So before, before that, though, yep. had you told anyone else that you had been shot? Only my husband knew. Okay. So you're hearing a different noise, and you say it's footsteps. It's footsteps. Um, I was waiting for a shift. I didn't believe that this was life-threatening. Um, and so I was waiting for a shift to say, I've been injured. Like once this, the, everything was taken care of. What do you mean when you say everything was taken care of? Um, the shooter was taken into custody, um, and anyone um, who needed help got help. But, but you did need help. I didn't think that I needed help, no. Okay. At some point, you got out of that room. So... Do you know how long it was? Um, 20 minutes, I would say. Um, after the shift with the footsteps, I texted the teacher next door to me and said, I've been shot. Um, she called 911, and there was another teacher in that room who texted our administration. Um, or Kurt Noose arrived at my door, who was an administrator. Um, the assistant principal at the time, still is. Um, he arrives at the door and he says, Molly, are you in there? 
or Molly, are you okay? Something to that effect. And what, what did you do? I said, I'm, I'm here. Um, but I was afraid to open the door. Why? I've known Kirk for 20 years. I know the sound of his voice, but I did not trust anything in that moment. So you weren't sure it was him? I wasn't. Okay. Within a few seconds, or um, 10 seconds, 20 seconds maybe, um, there were officers at my door. Um, and they, I think that's when they asked, are you injured? And I said, yes. They, um, I said, do you want me to take out the night lock? And they said, yes. Um, and then I said, do you want me to open the door? And they said, yes. Did they say what, that you were safe? Did they say that? Were I don't recall that. Okay. Um, I opened the door and they, it, I was still really crouched down. Um, and they scoop, kind of like scooped me up. Um, and started exiting me out door four. So they take so me you out. walked all the way down the hall? Yep, out of door four. Um, Do you remember what you saw when you walked out? What did the hallway look like? Was there anyone there? The hallway was completely vacant. Um, they, they had me under the arms. There was two men with guns both in front of me and behind us. So they walked you out the door, and, and what did you do? Where did they take you? Um, they walked me out, and we just stood beside door four for a second. The other, one of the officers went right back in, um, and the one that stayed with me said, I'm at a radio for an ambulance. Um, we just need to make sure that nobody else uh, is like has a higher need than you. So how long did you stand there? It might have been three or so minutes. Okay, and eventually an ambulance came? Uh, there was one, I, yes. Okay, yes. so they, they get you in the ambulance, and yes. where did they take you? Um, to the hospital up here. Were you feeling any pain at this point? Um, I could not feel physical pain, no. Okay. At some point you found out what your wound was and where it was, correct? So I knew I, I had been, had sustained an injury to my arm. Um, Can you tell the court what the injury was and? Yeah, um, I was shot um, through the fatty part of my arm, um, through and through. So I want the record to reflect, Your Honor, that she is pointing to her left shoulder and she is pointing to the portion of her bicep area that is in how many inches away from your from your heart? About six. Okay. Thank That's you. The record will so reflect. Thank you. You were treated there and released, correct? Correct. Okay. You said that you were in shock. Mm -hmm. At some point, did you were you told or did you see the door of your classroom? Um, last week. Okay. And when was that? Why did you see that picture? Um, I had met with you to talk about testimony, uh, about testifying, and um, that's when I saw the door. And when you, when you look at that door, what do you think? Um, he was aiming to kill me. The top shot was intended for my head, and the two shots were intended for my chest. What point did you realize how close that, that bullet came to your, to your heart? Uh, 
it was it would have been weeks later I realized oh the it is right in line with my heart okay it was like a sudden realization it was definitely after the new year so if you hadn't moved to the right mm-hmm. it would have hit you in my head or in my chest yes okay. Molly have you gone back to visit the school mm-hmm. Um, I went back to visit my office um, at the end of January. And why did you do that? Um, It was my hope to go back to Mm -hmm. the high school. You wanted to go back to do the job that you were doing before? Correct. Okay. And you didn't end up doing that, did you? I did not. Okay. Can you tell the court what that was like and why? Um, I... I couldn't, I, I just, at the end, I wanted to go back. I loved the work that I was doing. And I wanted to kind of prove that I could go back. Um, but it was just too hard to be there. It's like I couldn't access things that I knew when I was in that space. What do you do now? Um, I work at Oxford Virtual Academy as a mentor. Okay. Um, Was there any lasting uh, scar or pain from that injury? Um, There's some, there was some numbness for a while. Um, There is still a visible scar. Okay. And I I, I viewed the scar, and I certainly wouldn't ask you to, to show anyone else, but can you describe where your scar is? Yep. Um, so it's on the back side. It's about right here. I can feel the two. That's uh, where the bullet entered and exited. There is a, uh, a red. It's still red. Um, in between uh, where the bullet hole cauterized my arm. But you can still visibly see where it entered, entered and, and exited. exited. Molly, I asked you when you sat down why you wanted to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. And you answered that you love teaching and you love kids. Mm -hmm. That's right? That is true. Is that still true today? That is still true today. Okay. And the last thing I want to ask you is you said that when you looked into the shooter's eyes, Mm -hmm. you did not recognize that person? Correct. Okay. Do you see that person anywhere in the courtroom today? I do. Can you describe something he's wearing? Um, He's wearing glasses and um, an orange top. May the record reflect she's identified the defendant. So reflected. Nothing further. Thank you. Cross. This is Darnell. In order to become a teacher, you went to college, correct? I did. You had a major? I did. What was it? English. Which would make sense that you're part of the ELA program, correct? Correct. And did you teach English at the middle school? I did not, no. What did you teach at the middle school? Uh, When I, like years prior, when I first started teaching? Correct. Um, It was one of the subjects that I taught. I had... um, I worked at Crossroads for Youth, which was an adjudicated youth facility, um, and I had all middle school boys at the time. And so it would have been more specific, like a reading or um, a writing course. Okay. And in that position, you were still a teacher, correct? Correct. You weren't part of the counseling staff? I was not part of the counseling staff. Um, as part of your education, do you have or did you have any sort of classes in childhood development? I did have classes in, yeah, basic childhood development my sophomore year. Now, as a teacher, you're licensed as such through the state of Michigan, correct? I'm a licensed teacher teacher through the state of Michigan. And that has some things to do with why you have some experience in first aid type classes you're required to do that as a teacher correct i don't know if that's a requirement by the state of michigan or if that's just something we're required to do but it is part of something that we have to do i mean it's part of training that i've been given through 
professional development. And as a teacher, you're also something called a mandatory reporter, correct? Correct. Can you describe a little bit about what that means? Yeah, so if um, something's concerning, um, uh, like a student uh, says that she has been attacked, um, that is something that I would have to report. And who do you report that to? I would report that to, um, oh my gosh, who do I report that to? Um, I would probably go down to the office and say, who do I report this to? Um, maybe Child Protective Services? I don't believe it, it could be Child Protective Services, but I know I would go down to the office and ask, this is what happened and I need to report this. So you mentioned having children and your concern for them and your role to protect them, correct? Correct. Um, and you would think that would be consistent with any parent, correct? I would think. So um, from a perspective of a parent, if you saw a child struggling with mental health issues, would you get that child some sort of uh, treatment or support or counseling? I would. I would. <laughs> and if that child reported delusions, hallucinations, hearing voices. Your Honor, this is a witness that testified about being shot and she's a victim. I, I don't know, I, I, I'm not sure where counsel's going, but she's not a, she's not qualified as a child development expert and, and I would ask that, that, that counsel refrain from asking these kinds of questions. Your response? Your Honor, this is a Miller hearing. There are Miller factors. One of those factors is the history, uh, family history of Ms. Mr. Ethan Crumbly. I'm asking her from a parent perspective, not necessarily her personally, and even as a teacher, questions that get toward his family history, her knowledge of it, as well as the issues that should be raised in a Miller hearing. It may be a Miller hearing, but this is a victim of a crime. And if she wants to call somebody to talk about those things, they have witness lists and they're going to do that. But this witness is not and should not be subject to those questions. And she's not a lawyer and she doesn't know what the Miller factors are, unless there's some independent knowledge I don't know about. Thank you. Let's get to the point. You can ask her specifically if she's ever interviewed your client. I think that's more appropriate, um, but to ask her general questions, I don't believe that's appropriate here as you haven't laid the appropriate foundation for this witness to ask those, answer those questions. So the objection is sustained. You may continue. So if as a mandatory reporter, you learned that there was a student having hallucinations, mental health issues, delusions, or hearing voices, would that be something that you would report to someone? I would take it down to the office, yes. And if you knew that a student had been left alone as an elementary student or a middle school student for hours at, during the evening and nighttime hours, night after night after night, would that also be something that as a mandatory reporter you would bring to the office's attention? I have never had that happen in my career. I don't know what I would do. That would be something that would concern you enough that you would have to think about whether you would be required to report it then. Would that be fair to say? Your Honor, she's answered the question. She said she doesn't know what she would do. Thank you. Respectfully overruled. You may answer the question, ma'am. Can you repeat the question? Sure. As a mandatory reporter, if you had learned that a student in an elementary school age or middle school age bracket had been left alone for hours by themselves at night and in the evening, night after night after night, would that be something that you would have to think about reporting to someone? I would be concerned, absolutely. Um, I don't know the circumstances specifically, I would have to hear, I would have to hear what your, what the circumstance, like what is, what are the circumstances exactly that are happening for me to know whether or not 
I'm reporting. I don't, right, what, like, you're talking middle school, elementary age. There is a, what's the age limit for kids to stay home alone? Your Honor, she, she said she doesn't know, please. Sure, and she's answered the question. You may ask your next question. I was, I was, that's fine. I was waiting for her to finish her response. Sure. What age group is in middle school? Um, well, they start in sixth grade, right? So you're looking at 11, 12, 13. In Oxford is middle school sixth, seventh, and eighth grade? That's correct. But not ninth grade, that would be high school, correct? Correct. Now, um, do you know what the Miller factors are? I have no idea. Okay. Do you know Ethan? Other than the moment that I saw him raise the gun to me, I have never seen him before. So you've never had a conversation with him, never had him in class, even in element or middle school, I'm sorry. No. Um, you've never seen him at lunch? No. Now, As you sit here today and testify on your own personal knowledge, you can't tell us anything about Ethan's family life, correct? Do you know how hard it is to heal from something like this? I avoid everything I can to heal. This is learning about what happened is not part of my healing process. Do you know anything about whether he's been diagnosed with Your a mental Honor, health she disorder? Asked, she has answered this question the at this point. The objection sustained. Let's move on. She's already indicated she doesn't know anything about your client. She's never met your client. She has never met him in lunch, et cetera, hasn't met him in middle school. And so she wouldn't know any or have any personal knowledge about your client. In fact, the witness has just said she's tried to avoid everything as a part of her healing deed. Objections sustained. I'm going to ask respectfully that you move on. Thank you. Do you know what it means to be rehabilitated in the sense of the criminal justice system? Your Honor? I do not. Your Honor. And Your she's Honor. answered the question. I understand oh, your objection. Oh, okay. but, yes. but for the record, it, it, it it's bordering on harassment for the sake of harassment. This counsel knows full well. She has no idea, and she's also visibly shaken and asked her to, to say, I don't, I don't know anything about it and I don't want to. The court agrees and that's why I'm asking counsel to move on away from this because again, unless you're going to lay the appropriate foundation that she knows something specific about your client or that she has specific knowledge of uh, childhood trauma, etc. that's a part of the Miller factors, she's already testified that she does not know and so with that being said, the court is sitting as the trier of fact here, and I've been listening throughout this entire hearing, and I will note that there are some things that have been relevant to the Miller factors, there's things that have not been relevant to the Miller factors. The court will place the appropriate weight on the evidence that supports the Miller factors. And so I've been listening very patiently, but again, this witness has testified that she doesn't know what the Miller factors are, and the court is, again, based upon her testimony, is going to conclude that she has no direct testimony as it relates to the Miller factors. And so again, counsel respectfully, please move on. The objection is sustained. How many years did you teach at well, Crossroads for Youth? Two years. Your Honor, that was my last question. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Ms. Hopp. Any redirect? Yes. Thank you for being so strong and for being, having the courage to be here. May she be excused, Your Honor. Yes, ma'am, you are excused. You may also leave the courthouse. Any need to have this witness called back? None at all, thank you. Thank you, ma'am, you're all set. With that being said, the time is approximately 4.05. As I indicated to counsel off the record, we will end our hearing uh, before 4.30 because of security building issues. Uh, with that being said, we're going to conclude for today's date and we're going to pick up tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. Uh, with that being said,